This is a special edition of the Mike Gallagher Show. Coronavirus in America. We're using the full power of the federal government to defeat the virus, and that's what we've been doing. For a while, life is not going to be the way it used to be in the United States. As we face this national emergency pandemic, now is the time for knowledge and clarity. And this is the place to get it. We're going into a full crisis footing. This is a wartime dynamic. We have to think about helping each other in different ways. The president made very decisive decisions quickly. 2020 is definitely going to be one for the history books. And as we take it all in, we know that we'll get through this together. We're America. And now, here's Mike. I'm on the verge of uh, becoming just a uh, a beacon of what I hope is inspirational news. You know, we've, we've done that pretty much through 2016. We pledged to not contribute to the, to the sort of anti-Republican, anti-Trump hysteria, the hatred that we see exhibited in the mainstream media so often. And we do see a lot of hatred uh, and a lot of corruption, a lot of bias. Uh, on a regular basis, and I'm I'm this close. I mean, I come to work now with a sense of responsibility of giving you facts, arming you with knowledge, uh, giving you as concise um, a, a, a presentation of what we're what we're facing, um, trying to give you perspective, giving you my opinion. Um, yes, I think the the social distancing uh, and the isolation that we're doing makes sense, although it's some days hard to wrap my brain around it, the way we are shutting this economy down so thoroughly, and we're going to be, we are paying such a heavy price. But I also think it's important to focus on perspective and good news, potential good news, and understanding that we have reason for hope. This is not going to be forever. It's a longer thing than we've ever been through. We've never been through anything like this. Um, And the government's response, some people I know insist, is an overreaction. I get it. I'm trying to be respectful. If you disagree with me that I accept the social distancing and the staying at home, Um, if you don't, I get it. We're frustrated. We're frazzled. You know, people are aware of how many more deaths we've already experienced in this country to the ordinary flu than we have COVID-19. People know this number. But there's a risk when I give you the number that you think, well, everything's going to be fine, and what's the big deal? That's the downside to giving you a number. But data is important because it helps give us some clarity. It helps give us some perspective. Here's some data. And I'm, I'm, I promise you, I've heard people use this data and say it with an outcome that I don't agree with. Let me, get, let me tell you what I mean. Some people are going to give you the flu deaths compared to the COVID-19 deaths in America and say, see, there's no problem here. That's not what I'm saying. This virus is real. Social distancing is real. Keeping away from one another until we can flatten the curve matters. Numbers are increasing. There will be more deaths, probably many more deaths deaths than the ones we have now. But I'm going to give you a little bit of perspective. Right now, the CDC officially estimates that we have had approximately 590 deaths due to coronavirus. I picked up the New York Post last night. Oh, my gosh, this young Brooklyn principal, this former New York basketball player, this left and right. You see stories now uh, of people dying from COVID-19. So according to the CDC, we right now have approximately 590 deaths. The CDC estimates that we have had approximately 23,000 deaths from flu. Just in 2020, I'm talking about the three months of 2020, over 23,000 people have died from flu, and to date, approximately 590 people have died from COVID-19. So this is what people mean when they say perspective. This is what people are trying to say about, uh, you know, not having such a sense of 
overwhelming fear and anxiety that you can't even function, like this is the bubonic plague. It's not. As you just heard Andrew Cuomo say, the vast majority of people who get this will not die. In fact, a big percentage of people who get this virus won't even get that sick. There are many people that are having symptoms that are, you know, they're not pleasant, but they are not unlike other sicknesses you've had in your lifetime. I say all of that just to try to remind you of some perspective and, and some analysis. And, and I'm not making these numbers up. If you want to find fault with me sharing this information with you, feel free to do so. I have tried my best to be um, welcoming to every point of view. I do not agree that it's business as usual. I do not agree that we shouldn't be doing what we're doing right now. I just don't know how long, how much longer it goes. And I'm a little interested, frankly, in how you feel this should play out. How much longer, now that we've had, um, what, eight, nine, ten days of, of sort of this whole new normal, let me ask you directly, before we bring in our infectious disease specialist at 9.30, excuse me, nine, dump that, before we bring in our infectious disease specialist at the bottom of the hour, Dr. Uh, Deborah Davis. She won the Nobel Peace Prize. Uh, she, is, uh, she works on disease prevention and environmental health factors. So at the bottom of the hour, we're going to bring, we're trying to do this almost every day, best we can, where you ask questions directly of the doctor, not me, your questions directly. And there's a couple of ways you can do it. You can call us at 800-655-MIKE. You can text message your comments to 1-800-655-6453. When you call, by the way, you can also leave a voicemail for Dr. Davis. So, you know, we'll, we'll do that in about 15 minutes from now. Your questions directly for Dr. Deborah Davis. But before we get to her, and with your questions about COVID-19, I'm going to ask you directly. My question for you is, how much longer do you predict we're going to be living like this? How much longer will the streets be empty? How much longer are we going to stay home and try to have little or no interaction with the outside world? How much longer will this be our reality? Weeks? Months? You give me a prediction, because I'd like to kind of uh, tap into your psyche right now and see where you think this is going based on, because, you know, we're all news junkies now. We're all watching the briefings. We're all absorbing everything. We're trying to learn as much as we can about COVID-19. I got more, uh, you know, knowledge, I think, or more information about hydroxychloroquine and uh, z packs than I could ever shake a stick at. So let me just start with you here in the relieffactor.com mobile studios. 